I think a lot of times, um, because our society is sort of trapped uh, in this um, this complicated and clear stuff, that when we when we actually go in to do complex work like we're doing here, um, and actually what I just heard in the softgov call, for example, is all about what governing constraints can we put on here as opposed to enabling constraints. And I think what a lot of times the role of the artist is to do is to say, hey, you know, um, I'm giving you a way back. So governing constraint only goes in the direction of this arrow, whereas an enabling constraint creates a bi-directional pathway from this uh, complicated stuff that's knowable but not familiar back into the complex, which is kind of the realm of the artist. And the realm of the artist might even be back into the chaotic, if you know what I mean. So I guess my, my point about that is um, that there is actually um, a way that you guys could talk about this. And the way that I talk about the work that I do is to try to pull people, because what basically you can see this direction that we're going, right? We have a thing that we're dealing with and then we kind of create a case around it. And then we're like, let's standardize it and become familiar with it. And then it becomes a standard. I think what an artist's job is to do is to work backward through this process and to reverse the entire thing and to go counterclockwise uh, through the process. So if you're trying to talk to technical people and tell them what it is that you're doing or why is it that what you're doing is valuable and so on, you know, you might use a translator tool like that. I was kind of, I'm also part of another group which is called Motion DAO, which is on another chain. But then, uh, basically, what I learned about it and like participating in the weekly talks is that it works around ethics. And I participated in doing some graphic design for the Consilience Library project. And I think this project is a lot about like. One thing is like a regenerative workflow. So it's a lot about learning how to develop tools which can be applied for crypto economics, uh, about the ethical aspect. And they're kind of thinking a lot about the crypto economic flower, which is kind of coming out of a paper called the foundations of crypto economy or something like this. Uh, there's some info about it. And uh, what I learned from it is kind of it's uh, an ecosystem with like a very diverse base of participants and a lot of persons like this initiative is kind of starting up kind of like initiatives within this ecosystem and specifically the library is kind of thinking about how to invite a, a subject matter experts to contribute. So that's kind of my understanding from it, but probably if you ask someone else, they will have a different understanding, but I think that's a bit also how the project is. That's quite interesting, I found really. Also building some regenerative ecosystem of ecosystems of cause like that. <laughs> Something like a big bang to me, like with art and connecting cities, it went quite a, like a scalable right now just get a proof that by just people there and doing like project i start them with the uh, d work by the way like hey, profile but on my website there is stateful art really like yeah just need... send me a message or something i don't know if, if there's like a group chat here or something i don't know how to work with this but... yeah oh, really, you know, um, if you if you put your shit your yeah your your site on the omega tech sub uh, group working group I oh, yeah, just mm -hmm. the yeah. group yeah. yeah and you know what Steph says is is basically my understanding too is like the first major project is is the library but like you know within that project there's research projects and then what what I'm doing on my own is like creating my own uh, research project into like 
basically it's like the importance of like creativity when you're when you're in a group especially when you want to bring a project um, into like reality you know from like the idea stage into working it out until like now now you got something whether it's content or a working model or for your app or whatever like the process of working in conjunction with um like I, uh, for my main contention is that within the process of working on a project, especially too, if you got people that care and you have someone that's creative, then your messaging, your artwork, your media all comes organically from from that. And and like I'm doing my proof of concept of like everything that I'm producing right now. Like I'm making these video edits that are, are collective. Um, the way I'm trying to write is collective and bringing in multiple people. And this is, this is like what I believe later is like how you, you see these, uh, projects that, that are more than just projects, but they're also these ecosystems that could, uh, tie up. But it's like, it starts from little seeds of ideas, these little groups, and then them somehow you know just being in touch with each other and, and sinking in in the larger context of like DAOs and then other DAOs yeah yeah okay <laughs> wait where did where did Shabnam go because I think we need to embed all the things we are talking about and obviously different creative flows and research those we are just putting into all the work we are doing so this would be like the embodiment of this and just trying to put sequence around how we are creating all this and you know, programs for I kind of started to do that with the, um, here I'll share really quickly if that's okay. So on, on the specific um, project pages, you can kind of start seeing here, for example, the regenerative workflow. You kind of start seeing how they relate to each other. So for example, like Satori and John's um, DUP Imaginarium polls, it kind of informs the dynamic energy budget technical polls as well. And then from there, we're synthesizing like the, the prototype. And then for the library, the self-discovery game will be part of the library eventually. So it's kind of starting to connect. Uh, so this working group Omega Manifesto has many sides and of course it's mm, an attempt to give an, up, give an overview of how we started working. <laughs> um, you know, what are the first principles that we at least in the beginning over one and a half years ago uh, decided we can put together and now that uh, and Again, Omega, uh, we decide here to explore this decentralized decentralization and autonomy, maybe up to its limits, uh, meaning, you know, we, we said it's not going to be another meeting, another work, uh, another session you have to just um, get into, but actually a place for people in the space who want to make sense of, of it all. And because Omega also focuses on token engineering ethos and ethics, um, it was just important to hold that space and not structure it, but see what emerges. This goes into what I, um, actually everybody from the energy uh, flow first mm -hmm. meetings not here. But um, that's kind of what we're doing in the energy flow, just from initial research. It's about you know, generally the philosophy of how energy uh, physics flow, but using that for your own self, like uh, you only have so much energy and time to dedicate to like what we're talking about right now mm -hmm. to your research. And so uh, picking stuff that is low hanging fruit that you're already kind of interested in and you're already, mm -hmm. you know, naturally. Um, <clears throat> with my friend that I do the mandala research with is like, I, mm -hmm. I said it that we, we recognize that we had this own personal itch of like something that we we've been yeah. doing for like six years and then like when we lined up it was like oh we speak like at least in that aspect the same language 
<laughs> and we're like, oh, hell yeah, okay. And we're like, we don't have to explain anything to each other. We could just continue mm. on, like, talking mm. about, like, where we are in, like, this field of, like, kind of study, like, this weird kind of area of, like, Robert Anton Wilson and uh, Douglas Rushkoff and kind of where we are right now, like, culturally in, in the digital landscape of, like, Siberia or whatever. Um, so like I find that like interesting in how we connected there but in the same respect for the energy flow one is that we're kind of overlapping our studies um, you know Jean proposed mm -hmm. this uh, uh, you know philosophy of this uh, uh, French philosopher and I, I just find it interesting and I just started to read it and make notes and it kind of lined up with something that I was already reading in my creative kind of like research for Imaginarium and we're doing like this like spoken word mixtape. Actually that came out of um, this reaction in this uh, Steam Hive community of, uh, we had a poetry <laughs> group and we noticed that like after sometimes called it dead post and like something that we, we spent a lot of time and that we thought was really good, like didn't get the attention that we wanted. So then we started to do like these lists and then we call them dead mm -hmm. posts and like, and then we did our own dead posts, like uh, poems. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna do the dead po spoken word poem, like mixtape, because I video edit. So anybody like bring their old like recycled poems and we'll do it. And that's all to say mm -hmm. that like, all this is like connected to me because it's like these things that we do already, but then like when we team up with people, going to like this, mm -hmm. and so in that poetry group, we all write poetry naturally, right? But when we share it, we kind of like, especially in the open mic night, we had, we were competitive <laughs> in, a, in a good way. Like, I would always like bring a poem and someone would say something, I'm like, oh God, I gotta write a new poem. <laughs> and I would always like rip up the poem that I brought to the open mic and write a poem like, on the spot to like respond. on the spot <laughs> yeah, to respond uh, back and so like that kind of like magic and I think you know even <laughs> how we're doing it in the threads like this asynchronous of like sharing our different things mm -hmm. and then when we have time and this is something I learned um, working in Imaginarium I actually did call this thread um, a dead spoken uh, poetics and in that one you could only talk in po poetry. And so like over time, like you, I, I would tell my friend, like I would have to like, it was like at the end of the day or in the morning, like make sure that I had time and space to give it my full attention. You know, like not being distracted by yeah. like pinging of mm. like, notifications, but to actually like, read and to actually, you know, respond mm. in like, you know, the felt experience of whatever that person was uh, uh, sharing poetically. And so like this became like this like practice that we did but I think to the to the extent of what we're talking about here of uh, finding what what we, we could give um, our time and energy to that will um, refill us, that gives us energy. And so it doesn't feel like a draining task. It, it feels energizing, and you and you feel even more um, energized to keep on digging down that like rabbit hole and keep on like scratching on that thing and to, mm -hmm. to see where those, those connections lie. And that's kind of what I feel my own personal like journey of the creative flow and the energy flow of this like overlapping of what we're doing. And real quickly to the energy creative flow, it's kind of like merging me, uh, Streamer D and Jolly kind of like working for like working together to do this kind of like mock or, or like prototype to the self discovery consilience library which mm -hmm. will lead, lead to the self discovery yeah. game. Like you can just go back to, um, like, you know, a poet like like Gibran on giving. You know, then said a rich man, "Speak to us of giving. You give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give." So that answers your question, um, Jolly, in terms of, yeah, that's you know, uh, <laughs> for what are your possessions but things you keep and guard for fear you may need them tomorrow. And tomorrow, what shall tomorrow bring to the overprudent dog bearing bones in the trackless sand as he follows the pilgrims of the holy city? I love that. <laughs> and what is fear of need but need itself? Is not dread of thirst when your well is full, the thirst that is unquenchable? This is the 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 way, you know, the extractive economy works, right? <laughs> 
you just Which way? hoard everything. It's actually, money creates it's, it's, some it's, some abstraction. It's yeah. Like yeah. people yeah. don't um, expose or feel like not needing to the other's needs. Actually, like right, um, like what I need, I don't write here and there. You know, it's like right. a bit shyness, maybe. Yeah, also creating some complexity there, but and this right here says really, it. Yeah, this right here says it. There are those who give little of the much which they have, and they give it for recognition. And their hidden desire makes their gifts unwholesome. That's precisely the thing I'm talking about, right? We created a whole, you know, re reward system. And there are those who have little and give it all. These are the beliefs in life and the bounty of life. And so what I'm saying is, is there the basis of our reward system should be roughly like a, um, like uh, that of a of a, a basic uh, income setup. And then yeah, above exactly. and beyond that, then you you have these additional forms of wealth. You know, all you have shall someday be given. Therefore, give now that the season of giving may be yours and not your inheritors. Right. So, I mean, you can take you can take like principles straight out of a book like the prophet and read like you know. You, 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 uh, uh, there's one section you often say, I would give, but only to the deserving. The trees in your orchard say not so, nor the flocks in your pasture. They give that they may live, for to its old is to perish. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is so when you have a reward system, you're, you're basically saying, here's someone that deserves a thing, but that doesn't make any sense in terms of, you know, and, and then at the end, he's uh, this part I love. He, he who is deserved to drink from the ocean of life deserves to fill his cup from your little stream. <laughs> that's that's the commons right there. That's Eleanor Ostrom. <laughs> I mean, you can just, you know, it doesn't take a genius to see this stuff, but I don't know why it's true. You know, like we just, but we don't, I don't know what it is when we're doing reward systems. We don't, we don't think about things like this. And so, so I, I like to make these kinds of connections, you know? So if you want to give somebody something, what is the way in which you're giving? You know, so that's all I'm saying. I'm 100% against reward, 100%. <laughs> and th this, to me, it sounds, maybe I'm wrong, but it's very uh, American Anglo-Saxon culture, you know, of this idea of seeking for some kind of authenticity. I mean, I, I think the the most important is that how, you know, you have some justice and equity, mm -hmm. you know, within a society that what we should, uh, uh, um, you know, fight for. Uh, but and also this reward thing is, is so connected to market culture, I feel. Yeah. And uh, and. Uh, and and I feel we need to disrupt more. Um, so yeah. I will try to make my, I started this board on this relationship something. I will try to mm. make it a bit more clear and share it with you for yeah. discussion, if you want, for another mm. time. I put it somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> just, just look at the profit on giving and see what you can break out from that in terms of what it is it that we can, because I could do that. I just haven't, you know, like <laughs> I live with this stuff in my head all the time and I'm trying to, you know, give it out to other people. But the fact is, is that, that, you know, this is my favorite thing. I, I hold, I keep it here all the time. Swamiji used to say, who are you to set right the world? You have to first rectify yourself in your own mind. When the mind becomes right, then everything will appear all right. Look within the mind yourself. Is never right. You know, it's never right. You, you try to make it right. That's right. You know? Exactly. <laughs> But, but, but you have uh, to be able to do it without doership, right? I can't, I have to be able to come and say and blow people's minds and shift their perspective and think about things and then walk in my merry way and whistle the whole time. And if I care too much about it, then I step away. That's why when I stepped away a month ago, you know, because I had to, I was caring too much. I was too attached to things and I didn't want, you know, so I just have to be able to come here. Um, hope that you guys are in line with what I'm talking about and I have this you know, <clears throat> thing in your mind that you want to change internally. You don't necessarily want to change the system because the system can't change unless you change internally because you won't then know what the delta is between those two things, right? And so so my role here is to constantly try to um, 
uh, coach people toward this uh, improvement of themselves and then to have us then get together and say, I, you know what, I realize this thing about, you know, the nature of this and I have to, and, but if you don't, if you can't penetrate the thing and you're just like, we got to reward people and we're going to reward them, then, then, then you're just doing violence to some future version of, <laughs> of the culture that will have to, do you know that there are lawyers even now there, there, there's a whole class of lawyers whose only job is to try to overturn uh, laws from hundreds of years ago. Yeah, <laughs> that's their only job. It's because they're they're brutalizing and, and violent to other people <laughs> in ways that that modern society could not have predicted. But they're still on the books. They're still hurting people, and they're still used as a pretext for violence toward people. I don't want to set up systems, and I don't want any on my watch to have people who I know set up systems that will then do violence to people either now or in the future. Yeah. And so this is my 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 thing. <laughs> so yeah, I just want to uh, thank you all for for participating, and uh, let's get the to token engine consonants library to the prototype. Um, um, how do you call it? To take off, and then let's see how how we want to con continue. But it would be quite interesting that through this creative and en energy uh, flow works. I'm hoping that we're going to come up with a new way of of doing, uh, yeah, of this the the art of token engineering. Okay, so that that was also from <laughs> from my chat. So if um, anyone else, if you have, yeah, oh, I just wanted to. I had this note of it, it's like staring at me right now, and it's from the reading of the of the energy um, dynamic <laughs> energy budget. Um, anyways, this took a little pieces of the quote, but anyways, it's the removal of this anxiety, this elusive attitude, freedom of mind. Just like this removal of that anxiety of like, you know, the old way of doing the treadmill, the mm. whatever term you want to talk it, the old legacy way or whatever, how we frame it. And then getting this elusive attitude of like where you're, where you find like your meeting or like where you find your, your space or like your clarity of where you fit in. Um, and that's uh, kind of like that freedom of mind um, mm. aspect. Of trying to uh, being in that space of um, this connection and, and where we kind of ideally, I think, well, at least for myself, want to be at. And I think it comes into like cycles of, I think, even too, when I propose this uh, mode of the, the NFT, um, I forgot how I framed mm -hmm. it, but, anyways, like, you know, the asynchronous of like what you do individually on your own of your own research, but then, like, when you come together and bring it in that. Um, circle of genius or circle of co-creativity yeah, yeah. and then the, <laughs> yeah and then and then like the third part is kind of like you uh, digesting it the metabolism giving that space for for mm -hmm. like that emergence to happen and then like that kind of Wonderful. Cycle.